I'm still not sure if I'm saving time by showing you guys that video rather than just showing you a static picture and then having me yak my head off for five minutes. It's kind of up in the air. Speaking of up in the air, this is Gokai Galleon, the Gokaiger's base of operations. Typical standard affair surface detail. By the way, the cockpit located right there behind one, two, three sails. So that you can look for it later on, Gokai Galleon only has one Gokaiger symbol on the main sail, and then it has an unpainted one here. All of the other Gokai machines have at least three visible um, Gokaiger symbols on them. One of the things I like about the DX Gokai O set, or Gokai O in general, is that it integrates the Gokai Ken swords into the subcomponent mecha somehow. Usually that doesn't work, but in this case it did. Yeah, this is the view that Earthlings usually get as, of the Gokai Galleon as it goes by. Next is Gokai Jet. Which, if you take away the wings, does it really look like a jet? Hmm. Landing gear can be retracted. That is strictly for transformation, though. Oddly, the front two landing gear do not retract. And that is it for Gokai Jet. Next is Gokai Trailer, which looks like two treasure chests sitting on not just 10, but 11 wheels. Why is that wheel there? Oh well, it's there. Why is it that semi-trucks are always referred to as something trailer in Super Sentai? I mean, I know why, just why do they have to call it that? And you can turn the tractor section in 45 degree segments, and you can also pop it apart, easily enough, for safety reasons. Gokai trailer. And then we have Gokai Formula, which, in case you haven't noticed, it's supposed to be an Indy stock car racer. I think the only indication of that is kind of sort of the profile, the proportions of the wheels, and the uh, wing fender thingies in front here, whatever these are. Oh, and the way the axles stick out on the front. That's pretty much the only way you know it's an Indy car, but yes, it actually is an Indy car. At least that's what it's supposed to look like. The back tires actually have some really nice texture along the outside. The the black has kind of a, a f not fuzzy, but has kind of a, a, a grating, grating, sandy pattern, whatever that phrase is. I just went blank. Sorry about that. And the bottom. And the only ABS on this is the front fenders here, I think. Yeah, that's right. Gokai Formula. At last, but certainly not least, is Gokai Marine. It's strange, they did not paint the cockpit right there. Actually, I think the cockpit is internal right there, and then that's the laser blaster right there. Although, if it has a laser blaster, why would it have torpedo tube doors? Anyways. Not much detail on the bottom compared to the others. 
And that is it for the individual Gokai machines. Oh, and they can all do this. <laughs> Wow, Plex is really getting into this trend of block formers. Even the 35th anniversary Super Sentai series hasn't been immune to it. Thank God for Thu, then. Thawed. Yeah, the Kaizo Kugatai Gokai O is a bit of a brick former. But it does have some very nice styling to it. Not just in the fact that it has shoulder cannons, over the shoulder cannons, which is always, always, always awesome. Nice detailing on there. But this Admiral's hat that it has. Not a Captain's hat, because a Captain controls one ship, and Admiral controls more than one ship. Anyways, yeah, it's a bit hollow on the back. But what I love is that it's wearing a bandana. The front of the bandana is kind of shaped like the Gokaiju's helmet, which is appropriate enough. And he's also got hair which is painted in back. That's neat. So I suppose this might be a Space Admiral's helmet, although it, um, hat, even though it's kind of exposed in back. Very, very nice, though. There's actually quite a bit of style, at least a Gokai Galleon, as far as the Gokai O is concerned. It's got a, it's got the profile of a, like, like an open, like an unbuttoned pirate's jacket to it, you know? The arms, though, not so much, although it does have those cannons on the back of the hands, so yeah, that's nice enough. Open palmed hand, closed fist. I love how the Gokai Ken gets stored on the hips. That's great. That's really, really neat. I love that. Very much like the Dai Shinken from the, uh, what was it, the Shinken-O in uh, 2009. And these, the, the wings from Gokai Galleon kind of hanging back like uh, coattails, kind of and a giant ship's wheel on the back. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's a block. Here's the really sad part, though. Articulation, Super Sentai standard, blah, 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 45 degrees, forward and backwards. Here's where the problem is here. We don't even get completely standard because it's got this shoulder kibble in the way here, so it can't even raise above 45 degrees. Now, yes, these are designed to pop off. I'm not going to do it because I'm going to break it. They are designed to pop off, believe it or not. I did it earlier. But anyways, yeah, these are designed to pop off, but uh, yeah. Forward and backwards, you only get 180 degrees of motion, so that's pretty sad. You also get, I don't know why they did this. I'm greatly fearing limb swapping in 2011. I don't know why they could do this because the feet are specifically designed that that large protrusion out the front of Gokai Trailer's trailer right there is specifically designed that the legs will only sit like this. They're always, always, always angled. And this just helps to keep the heel upward. So why can those turn? <laughs> with the Shinken, no, you just plugged it in and they would not turn at all. But with this... They turn, but it won't stand very steady. As a matter of fact, you can't even turn both legs at the same time. So, uh, yeah. Gokaio, hit and miss. Hit and miss. Although not necessarily hit and miss, is you can pop off the Gokai can. I'm going to drop it. And you can plug them into the... Actually, you have to unhook that which is kind of lame considering how nicely it snaps into there. See how that actually sits in front of the can? Then you got the other one here. And can I do this with only one hand? Drum roll, please. This one actually, you have to fight it a bit to get it in. Then you have the Gokai O with its Gokai can attached.
Of course, what kind of Super Sentai Anniversary Series robot would this be if it didn't have some kind of unifying gimmick? In this case, the Gokai Starburst finishing attack. This can be activated in one of two ways. You can turn the wheel clockwise one position at a time and thus pop open each of the doors individually, including the Gokai Cannon in the front, or you can do it the really awesome way and just turn it counterclockwise one position and deploy them all at the same time which is the not quite as methodical and boring way to do it. Unfortunately, the Gokai cannonballs are not represented in the arms or the legs, but the Gokai cannon definitely is represented. I like to call this the plank, as opposed to runway or something. And of course, unlike the show, the Gokai cannon isn't nearly as long, because, you know, it's exaggerated CGI and it would not fit in there nearly as well. Also, when you're deploying the Gokai Cannon, and thus the Gokai Starburst, this head has a tendency to pop down just because it's a little on the loose side, but eh, whatever. Each of the door sections is actually free turning. Uh, but what you can do is each of them has, such as right here, it's a little switch. Let me move my hand around the camera. You can push up and there it goes again. Just put all these away. Put a wing of the Gokai Cannon itself is a little tricky because you have to fold this down. Hold it in place as you push the torso back up. Let's do that one more time because that's just kind of cool. See? There it is. Rather cool. I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but in December 2010, I started my own YouTube channel. And right now, by far, my most popular video is an audio commentary and slideshow that I made on the first wave toys from Kaizoku Sentai Gokaiger, which, as of the making of this video, has well over 32,000 views to it. But I would still like to show you a clip from this video. And now on to the main event, the Transforming Mecha, the DX Gokai-O. I have to say, at first blush, this is actually pretty cool. It's got a lot of style to it. You know... I'm totally g digging the giant shoulder armor with the cannons built into them, and I like how each fist has a cannon built into it. I'm a little concerned with the way these treasure chest sections, that's apparently what they're going to be called, these treasure chest doors that are on them, um, that's going to make these, tr that's going to make the five vehicles very, very hollow, and that concerns me, because it means... These aren't, these aren't really going to be block formers, but all the action is going to be happening on the outside. There isn't really going to be much folding and twisting and flipping like we had in past series. Uh, it's certainly better than what we got with Tenso Sentai Go Sager. God, those things were awful. Ugh. Ugh. I, I, can't, I can't tell you. I don't have much time to talk about it, but... Ugh. I, I, I just want Go Sager to go away. Seriously. I wish it was erased in history. That stuff was awful. Seriously. So yeah, this thing looks a hell of a lot better. It's not going to have much of a transformation because it's just going to be a bu bunch of stuff moving around the outsides and that's going to have these big hollow interiors. Kind of reminds me of the transformation process for the Grand Liner from GoGo -Go 5 in 1999. Yeah, the vehicles are a little uninspired, like, uh, what is it, Gokai Trailer in the lower right-hand side there. That's kind of, eh, that's okay. Gokai Jet looks kind of interesting. Gokai Galleon. I don't like the way the, the, the main sails there just fold up in a weird fashion it just become the chest that's, like, lame. And I can now tell you that five months after I posted that video to my channel, and after finally handling the Gokaio with my own two hands, I can assure you that my opinion hasn't really changed on it. It's still a block former, and you would think that for the 35th anniversary Super Sentai series, they would kind of up the ante a little and give us something better than they did last year. But, as usual, we're still getting more boring-ass block formers. I mean, the individual Gokai machines are so boring and uninspired. They're just kind of machines that were slapped together, and they kind of sort of shaped like... Like, I don't even know what Gokai Jet and Gokai Formula are shaped like, because they don't really look like arms... But on the other hand, they don't really look like a jet and a Formula One racing car. Except for the little fenders and maybe some wings. And I mean, they don't even try to hide the hand, and the wings on that thing are terrible, and just... Ah, it doesn't do anything. Gokai Marine looks like a whale. 
Gokai Galleon is what it is, and actually that's probably the best piece of the five, but that's not saying very much, unfortunately, because I still don't like the way the thighs are exposed. But there's one thing about Gokai Trailer that I absolutely must bring up right now. Check this out. This is the Pat Trailer from the DX Deca Ranger Robo set from 2004's Tokusou Sendai Deca Ranger. It can wiggle side to side a little bit. I never understood why it is that it wiggled side to side so little. I mean, couldn't they have carved that out? Anyways, I'll do that for the video review of this. Um, the other similarity it has to Gokai Trailer is that it's hollow in the back because of the transformation. It has to, you know, the, the part from Pat Striker has to fit in there. And it also is rather hollow because it has to have that thing put in there, okay? So the back end is hollow and this thing can turn side to side, okay? Just like it is on Gokai Trailer, okay? So it's hollow on the inside, turns side to side, okay? There is one thing though that Pat Trailer can do which Gokai Trailer cannot, and that is form the leg by using a transformation joint, okay? This section does not come apart, okay? But, you know, it does this. Whereas Gokai Trailer substitutes a transformation joint for a part swapping gimmick. Can you call that a gimmick? It's not a gimmick. This does not pop off for safety reasons. It pops off because it's required to pop off. Oh my god. Oh my god. Plex. This is aimed solely solely at you. Okay, these things stick out. Looks really, really weird. Okay. The ironic thing about this situation, though, is that it actually rolls around all by itself because it's got that extra... Hey, look at that. A fifth wheel sitting back there. But you have to part swap. It's required. Why? They did it seven years ago. They can't do it again for the 35th anniversary series. Plex, unacceptable. Completely, totally, utterly unacceptable. So that was a surprisingly disturbing issue with Gokai Trailer. I was not happy about that at all. However, even though this is a block former, a simplified transformation either with the individual components or how they combine with each other is not entirely unexpected because we get this at the car or we get this rather awesome gimmick right here. I mean, that is very cool. And as I said in that slideshow commentary, the fact that they're hollow means that really the only transformations you can do is going to be small stuff along the outside. You're really only going to be able to slide things around and that's it. By the way, why doesn't that just slide up and down or... Nah, I'm being picky. Anyways, let's see. I'm going to flip that over. So, yeah, it is kind of an impressive surprise. But, and I have no doubt that any of these holes are going to be used up with accessory mecha very soon. However, if you're not going to be getting any of the accessory mecha, the only thing that these holes are good for is storing mini cons. And that's it. And so while it's understandable that having a hollow interior and preserving the hollow interior during the transformation means that everything, all the details and everything else will have to happen on the exterior is understandable. But regardless of what Bandai and Plex have planned for us, if you don't get any of those, then these hollow spaces become a hindrance to the toy. And then at that point, my typical arguments of block former, parts former, and uninvolved transformation come back into play. And so, ironically, it is the performance of this toy with the accessories that defines whether or not the DX Kaizoku Gatai Gokai O is a good toy on its own or not. It's because you have to have other accessory sets to not just justify the existence of this toy, but justify the gimmick which takes up so much of the mass, or lack thereof. However, there is one bright side to this, 
and Gundam Extreme Legacy was courteous enough to remind me of my own words from August 2010, wherein I said, you know what I would like to see for a gimmick someday on Super Sentai? And this, by the way, will just drive some of the CDX staff nuts if they ever watch this. I would like to see glowing parts, you know, just strips or the eyes or maybe you open up a panel and there's like a, a huge cannon just and then just wah and then boom. You know, I'd like to see glowing parts if only one time. And lo and behold, here it is. I mean, you've got a cannon that pops out. Now, admittedly, I was thinking of Transformers Armada Unicron when I said that out missile launcher built right into his chest, which is really awesome. But still, they did it. We have something that opens up and wah! So I'd say that was incredibly forward-thinking of me, and I'd also like to thank Gundam Legacy Extreme for reminding me of my own words. And now I'm going to be doing something which I've never really done before for a video review. Ever. I'm going to stop shooting this video right now, and I will come back to it in a couple of days. That will give me a chance to digest and write about and shoot uh, about the other accessory that was included in the set. Grr. Arg. I'm at a genuine loss for words as to how I feel about the return of the Magi Dragon. One of the more awesome animals that was ever produced for a Super Sentai series. I will say it is rather remarkable how close some of the uh, details on here are. For example, this is... Uh, Magitaurus's chest right there, it has the little belt. Magi uh, Mermaid's uh, feet right here. Uh, even the design of Magi Garuda's wings right here. You know, the, the arm wings when it's just Magi Garuda. PVC, decal, decal again, that's paint. I already did the head. The antlers or horns are PVC. These are PV the arms, forearms are PVC as well. The end of the tail is PVC. Even down to Magi Fairy's lower legs right there. There's a bunch of little details. Magi Garuda's torso and by turn um, the head for Magic King right there, which, well, actually isn't quite as obvious. I'm trying to get it in focus and doing a terrible job of it. But yeah. Posability is as follows. The jaw opens quite a bit. No significant detail there. Although they did, it does look pretty nice. Pretty close. The forearms swivel a little bit. And that's it. That's all the posability you get. Unless you want to start messing around with the transformation processes, in which case you can do this. Here's my favorite part. If only the real DX Magic King could have done that in 2005. If only! The head can also do the same, because it's on a spring. Although the antlers do have a tendency to reset themselves. And if you must, you can split this apart. Although, obviously, Magi Dragon's tail did not split apart in Magi Ranger. And that's it. It occurs to me that it would be negligent of me if I didn't show you how big the Gokai Machine number 1 set Magi Dragon is compared to the original DX Majin Gatai Magi King. And, uh, yeah, it's frickin' tiny. But I suppose that's necessary in order for the combining gimmick to work properly. I mean, remember how big the DX99 machines were in GoGo 5? They were really tiny compared to the Grand Liner. Now, I've already put some good quality photos over on my text and picture review on CollectionDX.com. See link in the comments section and closing credits. But sometimes there are just things you cannot show with a still photograph that you can with a really, really shaky handheld camera. How similar the heads are. 
I mentioned earlier that the tails were pretty close to each other. Well, except for the back half here, of course. You know, it looks completely different. But like I said, there's uh, Magi Mermaid's feet, even though oddly mermaids don't have feet. Mm. There's, uh, what is this called? Magi Taurus's, um, well, loincloth, is that what you can call that? I'm not sure. Similarity in the wings. Neck here. See, here's here's Magic King, Magic Taurus's head right here, and you've got the same thing right there, and not just you know the general shape, but actual details. Perhaps I should have selected my focus a little differently when I did this. The legs there compared to there, and even the hands. One of the strange things about Magic Dragon is it had that symmetrical thumb that always sat in the middle of the hand. Right there. That was always it, it looked a little strange, even for Magic Taurus. They actually recreated it on the uh Gokai machine, Magic Dragon, so that's funny. So yeah. Some things you can't show with a still photograph. Awesome toys in their element. But enough reminiscing about the past. Let us, like, make with the combining already, huh? Which, oddly in the show, is not referred to as a Gokai Buso, or equivalent naming. It's just a great power. I don't get it either. It just sounds strange. It's unusual. Something we got to do real quick with Gokai-O. Pop open the hatches. And this is loose enough, you can actually just pull it out manually, but they did provide us with an additional little switch here, so just crash. Okay, yeah, so anyways, that's all you got to do with this. The only real transformation that you do with Magi Dragon, at least by itself, is you just remove parts. But we do have to prepare the main body, so the head and body. You have to hold the head down and then force these over until it's like this. And then you're going to put this down until these black tabs on either side will brush up, kind of brush up against the ears on the, the uh, antlers, the horns of Magic Dragon, and that'll hold it in place. Because what happens is, during the transformation into Magic Gokaio, is when these buttons get depressed, it'll pop back up. Oh, looks like a beaten dog. Poor thing. Anyways. And you have to do this every time. You can either do it before you put the thing in, but you can also do it after the section. section's already been attached to Magic Gokaio. Now, each of the Magic Dragon sections has a colored arrow. Not only does this tell you the orientation of the piece, but it also tells you which limb you're supposed to put it into. Fitting the individual components into Gokaio is tricky the first few times because not only do you have to deal with spring segments, which have a tendency to want to pop out, with the components in the legs it's not nearly as much of a problem because those don't have any springs, but they still fold down via gravity, so there's its own trick to it there. And now finally, the steering wheel on the back of Gokaio can be used to its full potential. You can either turn it clockwise one segment at a time, and each of the limbs and the torso will pop out individually. Or you can get it over real quickly, turn it counterclockwise once, and boom, done. However, you will still have to unfold the antlers and forearms from Magic Dragon in order to complete the appearance. And you just set this off to the side so it can be stepped on. Boots! Now, the standard with any giant robot is that the wings appear either on the top of the torso or the back of the torso. Some exceptions are out the side of the arms or even out the back of the arms, but I have never, ever, ever, ever heard of a giant robot that had functional wings along the front of the arms. That, to me, is just one of the strangest things. But I suppose it's a small compensate. I suppose it's a small issue because you get a rather awesome flame watcher sitting in the mouth right there. So, mm. not a lot of detail especially on the lower legs. As I mentioned in the transformation video, the claws actually deploy via gravity rather than springs on their own. 
here's the sad part. Remember these kibble bits sitting up here? I don't know if you can call that kibble. Functional shoulder armor. The wings prevent the arms from folding up a full 90 degrees unless the wings collapse down like that. So, it is possible. But, uh, yeah, that happens. Now, to remove any of the segments, don't drop it, whatever you do. To remove any of the segments, you notice on the back of Gokai Trailer, Marine, and it's obscured here, but Gokai Jet has one as well, are these little tiny black buttons. These were not used, they're not used with Gokai O alone. What you do is you push on them. Please, dear God, do not drop this. And the segment will just pop out on its own. However, these segments are sticking out far enough that you can just pull it out on your own. Okay. Also, the thing to look at during the transmission, there's two ridge sections which will fit up along these slotted areas here. So be sure to look out for that as you're putting them in. And this applies to all five segments, but it's just another way of ensuring that you get the right components into the correct sections. And that is it for Magi Gokaio. Let's talk for a moment here about Super Sentai accessory mecha upgrades. I'm not going to go back to 2001 where it really got its start, but let's go back, oh, to the previous anniversary series in 2006. Now, from that point on, what have we had as far as accessory upgrades? Limb swapping, armor swapping, more limb swapping, oversized helmets, uh those things. And then in 2011, quite unexpectedly, we get this, which is just brilliant. Absolute genius. Uh, excuse me a moment while I reset all these things and don't show you, but I want to make Magigokaio look as good as I possibly can on screen. Now, I've heard of the Spirits Within, but the Super Sentai Spirits Within? This, ladies and gentlemen, is off-the-scale epic awesomeness we are talking about here. This isn't just a re-release of previous DX size Super Sentai toys, which, by the way, would be nice for those of us who would like to collect a couple of pre-Super Sentai designs. You know, don't have to upgrade them, just re-release them. Clean them up a little bit, fix known errors, blah, blah, blah. That would be epic in its own. But to integrate a previous, completely unrelated series with an anniversary series? No, just, no, no, let me back up. Just integrating one series with w another one that's completely unrelated? Yeah, Super Sentai does a little crossover between the previous year and the next year, but, you know, that's it. But to do it across multiple years and across multiple series as a tribute? And not make it a limb swap. Thank you, God, and by God I mean Bandai Plex and Toei, for really ramping it up and giving us this just, oh, I'm speechless. This, oh, I'm at a loss for words for a change. I, I really can't tell you how amazing this is. And oh, by the way, the accessory mecha does not just sit off to the side, but is actually hidden inside the toy so that you don't even know it's there until you activate it. Like I said, genius. Brilliant. That being said, it does look a little silly. For example, I kind of wish that these doors would have been on the side so that these wings would have come out the side of the arms rather than the front. That's... I don't know why. I like how these things fold up neat and clean. Although they do obviously look much bigger in the show. And they also just plain old look better in the show, because these wings are just kind of... I mean, I can... It's perfectly understandable why it is that they're so small and why they're shaped the way they are, but that doesn't mean I have to like what they eventually came up with in toy form. Having a dragon stick out of the chest, that's just fine. I'll even excuse the, the big old gapping hole right here in the front. Eh, we might have to talk a little bit about the gaps in here. But still, you know... I can't say any more than this. It's just great. And by the way, Gokai Machine Set number one, Magi Dragon, completely justifies, in my opinion, 
the reason for having these empty boxes of Gokai machines with the DX Gokai O set. Okay, completely justified. My greatest fear right now is that Magi Dragon will be the only accessory mecha that will actually fit inside of these holes. Now, from now on, I'm guessing it'll be limb swapping or things will attach to the outside. And they'll completely put these empty spaces to waste. I mean, how many months is going to be down the line before these things are no longer used and it just becomes another limb swap season? If they do a Shinkinger tribute or a Bokinger tribute, or maybe even one of the pre-Power Rangers era, uh, Flashman, Jack, Turbo Ranger, Denjiman, Battle Fever J, I mean, I mean, are they all going to have mecha tributes? Are they all going to be treated the same way? At least with Gokaio, I mean, it's also possible that some of these will show up halfway through the series when the Gokaiger have their second lead combining Robo make its appearance. But it's far too early to say at this point. I just hope that they use these compartments again because it is the whole justification for the Gokaio and why it's so blocky and why it is it can do this, this, and this. And yes, even though they do deploy the segments one at a time, it's totally awesome just to turn it once and the whole thing just pops out all the one time. That's pretty awesome. And yes, I also don't mind having to unflip some of these things. It's unfortunate they don't. I would like to have seen it, but I don't mind. That's not a complaint. That's not a problem with me. Despite the fact that the Gokaio is a bit of a block former, I completely understand how it is that the Kaizoku Sentai Gokaiju toys are so difficult to find. Because they are awesome. And they do something that Super Sentai has never done before. And it does it with a little bit of style. Good boy. Yes. Yes. You're a good boy, Magic Dragon. Yes. Hmm. Before I close this video out, I would like to pass my undying gratitude and special thanks and a shout out to my boss, Josh B., who found this in a Yahoo Japan auction and got it for, I think he said it was like double the MSRP, so props to him for doing that because that really hurt him. I said, Josh, man, I got to pay you back. But he said, no, 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 you're, this is a gift. This is, this is a treat because you do such awesome reviews and you promote our stuff and you're such a nice guy. So, Josh, for like the third time in this video, I'm at a loss for words. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This helped me enormously. Now I just got to find some stores that keep all the other toys in stock. Ugh.